everyone, welcome back to, uh, to another episode of my car physics tutorial. Um, in this episode, we'll be talking about how to get the correct vectors, so the correct lines basically on which to apply forces. And we'll also add a very simple version of those forces so that we can actually drive the car, so that you can, uh, can move around with it. Now, what I mean with how do we get the vectors? Um, if you remember in our previous episode, we are well in one of the previous episodes, I should say, <laughs> it was the first one. Uh, we calculated a ray down from the transform point. So from in this case, the, the wheel forward. And we shot a ray down to the, to the ground to see if we were actually grounded. And if yes, we would push the car up. Now, obviously in, um, in a car, in, a, in the wheel itself, there's also a forward vector on the blue axis and a right vector on the red axis in this case. So we need to apply a force that way and a force that way. Now, what I mean by this is um, in Unity, there are two different scales and we need to get the correct one because if we would, for instance, take the world space, uh, the world scale, world position, whatever you want to call it, um, the, the vector would always be the same. So in this case, uh, it is a 2D picture, this. So the X and the Y are uh, uh, blue and red in this case. If this was a 3D picture, it would have looked different. Uh, then this would have been the Z and that would have been the X. But since we're working in 2D right now, since it's just from the top, um, uh, we have these values. Um, so the world space in this case would always give us the same answer. So the forward of the world space would always be on this blue line uh, and the right would always be on the, on the red line. Now, obviously the car is gonna turn. And in that case, the forward and the right would have to change, which we call the local space. Because if we get the local space, then the forces that we apply will actually be applied to, um, to the correct point in space and to the correct rotation. So in this case, since we know uh, the rotation of the, of the front wheels that we calculated in the previous episode, if we apply a forward force and the wheels are rotated, it will automatically um, apply those forces to the rotated object. So in that case, the car will automatically turn. We don't need to do any additional calculations for that. Now, if you uh, remember, like I said, we, we did the ray cast and we know the hit point. So the point in space where the, where the ray cast hit the ground. Now, right now it's a little bit difficult to see. So I think what we first should do is just add a, um, add a debug line in the, in the code, which we can do easily. I also scaled up this, um, the, the script a little bit. So I hope that helps uh, in the, um, uh, well, we could do it anywhere probably, but let's say, yeah, let's just do it in here. Why not? Debug dot uh, draw ray. And we want to do it at the transform dot position, obviously, because it needs to uh, be on the actual um, uh, uh, position of the, the transform. So this uh, right here, we want it to go down and we want to use the actual local up so of the car itself so that if the car is flipped it would still show that line because otherwise if we would do vector up uh, in this case vector three up it would take the world vector so that that is the difference there as well uh, which i also explained with that picture and we need to do that times the spring length not spring force and we let's just set it to green why not there we go so if we do this and we click play we should have four lines. Okay. So that is the actual spring length. If we want to make it even easier, we could probably do this. Uh, just do that plus wheel radius. There we go. Now it should reach the ground if I'm correct. Yeah, see, there you go. So that should make it a little bit easier to understand. So we know exactly where the point hits the ground. So right there, right there, and of course the same on the other side. And to calculate the, um, the actual uh, velocity of the car, so uh, of course the wheels need to apply a grip uh, on, the, on the ground. So we need to know at what velocity the car moves. And we actually have a really, uh, really easy code for that. So in this case, let's just 
create a new factor tree, factor three, wheel velocity ls, and I call it ls in this case because local space, there we go. And in the actual hit, because we only need to calculate this when we're on the ground, we say wheel velocity ls equals rb dot get point velocity hit dot point. So what this actually does, and we, we need to alter this a little bit to get it to local space, but what this does is um, it gets the point velocity. So in this in this case, a point in space, uh, the hit dot point that we already uh, talked about, and gets the velocity. So the velocity on the x, the y, the z, etc., etc. But this is the world scale. If we use this, it will calculate it based on the actual zero, zero, zero of the of the world. And we don't want that. We want to calculate it from the actual local space. So what we can do is add a transform dot inverse transform direction and just put that around there. And now this code will actually make sure that it's calculated based on the actual position and, and scale and, and direction etc etc uh, of the actual point in space rather than the point compared to the zero of the world all right now we have the wheel local velocity but now we need to actually apply a force so we need a forward force so like I said um, oh shit I closed the picture sorry <laughs> uh, 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 YouTube references so we need a forward force and we need a right force. And in this case, the right force should actually be left force because it needs to counteract the right force. Um, so let's also create a private float fx and a private float fy. So fx is force on the x, the forward, and fy in this case is force on the y. fx equals and in this case like I said we're not going to use the actual wheel local velocity um, with the forward force since we just want to we just want to drive the car we, we don't want to worry too much about the actual uh, uh, grip code basically that we'll work on later in later episodes um, so in this case uh, we will actually use fx equals input dot get axis horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical, my bad, vertical, times, and we just do spring force, that's all. So the spring force in this case is going to be uh, a specific value, so like 3000 or whatever, so we just use that. We could also just put 3000 here, but since we already have a variable for it, why not? And then FY, we want to actually use the wheel local velocity, and since it's a vector 3, so it's actually a 3D vector, we want to get the right axis, which is x, because in Unity, in a 3D environment, if it would allow me to turn, there we go, the x axis, x axis is always on the right. And we want to multiply that by the spring force. And now, of course, we need to add it to our force calculation. So we need to say fx times transform dot forward. And we want to get brackets around this just to be sure. It should uh, theoretically always calculate the, the, the multiplication over an actual addition, but I like to be consistent with that. So I just always put brackets around it. And then we do minus transform dot weight. There we go. So in this case, the, the spring force is, needs to be counteracted uh, on the left of the car instead of the right. And if we now click play and focus on the car, because otherwise we don't have any camera to follow, if I press forward, you can see the car dips and dives just like an actual car does. And that's because we use physics. So we don't need to calculate anything for that, just need to know where to apply forces and it automatically does that. Now, obviously, this is not realistic or anything. This is just uh, just so you can get uh, have a little bit of fun, and we can turn. Now, the car right now is a little fast, as you can see. 
So we could give it a little bit of help and just say times 0.5f times spring force. It, it needs to, you know, just be a little bit slower so it doesn't bank the, the corners too hard. It's still like banking really hard and we can fix that later with like a simulation of, uh, of uh, whatchamacallit. Um, oh, I forgot, I forgot. There's a, there's specific bars in a car on the back and the front that actually helps stabilize the bars. How can... <laughs> it makes sense when you say it out loud, but yeah, so um, it's a really short episode. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get more scripted episodes so that I have something to look back on if, uh, if something goes wrong. Um, and, and to keep it a little bit shorter that, uh, that it's easier for you to follow. And uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode and next time we will uh, probably add a little bit of wheels just so you have some vis visual representation of what's going on. Anyways, bye guys! See you next time!